Alrighty, what we got here is a uh, Polk uh, PSW 111 subwoofer and for uh, home stereo and the board is fried and these new the whole sub retails for like 300 and Polk wanted me to pay 180 just for this board right here because it's clicking it's um, buzzing it's doing all sorts of noises and if you have one it's doing it um, somewhere in the amplifier circuitry here whether it's a capacitor or not I don't know but they wanted 180 bucks and I said no nah, I'm not gonna do that Cause sometimes you can get these on sale like I got this one on a Black Friday deal probably about six years ago for about 225 or 200 so it was a good deal but anyway so it works good uh, other than when it worked but um but now it doesn't work uh, any any inputs LFE is what I use and it's clicking in and out anyway this is bad so what I decided to do instead of buying a new sub is uh, look get a new panel here amplifier this is a Dayton um, SA100 and it's a, it's a 100 watt sub uh, amp and it has all the exact same features as the Polk original one only difference is here on the LFE input, you gotta use uh, RCA, two male RCA to a uh, female uh, to bring your LFE input in, if you're gonna do that. And that's it, has the auto feature, on, off, or auto, the phasing, reverse or normal, and uh, you can change your uh, frequency or your gain here and your speaker inputs. Anyway, it has all that. It's a much beefier, I mean, look, up, look at this thing. Uh, the exact measurements I think are two inches deep. Let me check because on the uh, it's deceiving on the website. It shows us like four inches, which, which is not. So right here, actually inside going into. See, we got the speaker wires just kind of sitting on, so that's deceiving there. So we're about two and three quarters to the back, which when you look in here. We do have to watch for and these just unscrew, pull out, and the the, uh, the speaker wires would just stake on uh, connectors to the back of the uh, board. Pretty easy, just pull them out. You can see there's here, that's all there is to the inside of a subwoofer. Speaker's up in there. This is the uh, bottom vented port here. This is the bottom of the sub here. The speakers on the face it doesn't protrude the front it's one of the things i liked about this so even so i can we have cats and i don't want them to destroy it so anyway it will fit in there i had to I sit it in there um because you actually have mike can you hand me tape measure me we have about let's see if right about there Actually from the face, so we have about three and three quarters inches. So we do clear, so this will clear. Um, the only thing is, when you set it in here, it's not a perfect fit. Yeah, can you put those in? It's dangerous. Hold that, can you put that in there too? It's heavy. I can't really do it. Oh, oh. Okay, so let me slide this over here table's a little tall here so this uh, doesn't quite fit the whole opening exactly so I'm gonna see if I can I drilled two pilot holes here with a real tiny bit I'm reusing the existing Polk uh, screws and uh, let's see if I can get a good enough fit here if not I'm going to uh, retrofit uh, probably a larger piece of something here and router this out and fit them. I'm gonna try this first because it's not it's not gonna hurt anything on the sub on the, the enclosure itself because if I have to go bigger it's no big deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and um, drill them out and see how well uh, she fits. If it's good I'll pull it back out. I'm gonna make wire connections, put it back on, plug it in and see how she sounds. And if I get a lot of vibration and bass and, and cuffing and all that coming out of here I'm gonna have to think of something else. But we'll check it out here in a minute. So that went pretty good. Um, I got them all to to bite, 
So what I did is I took a tiny drill bit. You want to take a drill bit smaller than the, uh, about half the size, maybe a little larger of the diameter of the screws you're using for pilot holes. This is only fiberboard. You don't want to screw these in with a, a you know, a drill driver and have it crack or something. There's not a whole lot of meat here. So on the, on the outside ones here, I took a drill bit and went a little bit of an angle. The ends I went straight in and as you can see, I got it pretty much centered as best I could. And uh, they all, they all seem to pull down pretty good. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. I just got the wires inside temporarily. I just I'll use a couple of wire nuts to put them together. I'm gonna solder them um, after. Cause if I don't like this, if it doesn't work, I'm gonna have to pull it apart and make another panel. And I don't wanna have to cut them, re-solder them and all that. So if this works out, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back off, um, solder them together. And because uh, I don't have the stay cons, the ones that the, uh, the ones that are made to male and female to go together, but I'm pretty good at soldering, so it'll actually be a better connection. So, especially with the vibrations. So, anyway, yeah, and you can see it's much beefier. And got the cooling fins and a lot of good reviews. We're gonna put a test here in a minute with some Bob Marley. So, uh, we'll see. I'll get her plugged in here and uh, get her set up. All right, I got it hooked up. I got some bass. Sounds pretty good. Been missing that for a while. I got I got missing the crossovers and stuff out of my receiver. I got my Alkyo receiver here. Badass. If you don't have one, if you're looking for one, highly recommend it. I'm gonna do some. Uh, by amping here, I got some new pull M60s, and uh, gotta get all the setup here this weekend. But one thing I want to point out: this is the Y adapter you're gonna need to get. So going into the back here, if I can get the brightness going. It's on your inputs there, on the left, RCA jacks, left and right. This is my sub out coming from my my receiver. You know, a lot of like the old poke, the old amp that was in here, it just went to the one channel. You need to do this, and it doesn't really say that in the instructions, but when you order this, if you order this Dayton amp, um, this is just a media bridge, I think. You can get mono price media bridge, 10 bucks. Get a good quality one. And uh, I don't see anything. I Man, I don't feel anything coming out here. It's not obviously doing much yet here. I want to listen to that. Oh yeah, I like that. I got, got some adjusting to do, but it sounds good. So, uh, this may be, this be good, uh, this might be the setup right here. Might have to do nothing except take them apart and, uh, pull it back out and, uh, solder them wires. Anyway, sorry to give you some bad angles. Not much room here. That sounds nice. But that's about all there is to that. Piece of cake took me about a half hour. I got your base here. Good luck.